Here we begin to explore matrices whose columns form an orthonormal set. So the first thing that we need to do is look at this theorem, which says that the columns of an M by N matrix Q form an orthonormal set when the product of the transpose of matrix Q with matrix Q is equal to the N by N identity matrix. So the goal here is to show that the ith jth entry of this product of the transpose of matrix Q with matrix Q is equal to zero if I does not equal J or is equal to one if I does equal J. So to begin, let's let vector Q sub I be the ith column of matrix Q or equivalently the ith row of the transpose of matrix Q. Now by the definition of matrix multiplication, the ith jth entry of the product of the transpose of matrix Q with matrix Q is equal to the dot product of the ith row of the transpose of matrix Q and the jth column of matrix Q. So we can take this and rewrite this as the ith jth entry of the product of the transpose of matrix Q with matrix Q being equal to vector Q sub I dotted with vector Q sub J. Now we know by definition that the column vectors of matrix Q will form an orthonormal set if and only if the dot product of vector Q sub I with vector Q sub J is equal to zero if I does not equal J and is equal to one if I is equal to J, which by the above equation is gonna only hold true if the ith jth entry of the product of the transpose of matrix Q with matrix Q is equal to zero if I does not equal J and is equal to one if I equals J, which is exactly what we're looking for. Woohoo! So we have officially demonstrated that the columns of an M by N matrix Q form an orthogonal set when the product of the transpose of matrix Q with matrix Q is equal to the N by N identity matrix. Now, if that same matrix Q from the last theorem is a square matrix, then we give that matrix a special name. So an N by N matrix Q, whose columns form an orthonormal set is called an orthogonal matrix. Now, keeping the definition of an orthonormal set in mind, we know that the column vectors of matrix Q are all orthogonal to each other and that those column vectors are also all unit vectors. So it might be better to name this the orthonormal matrix. However, orthogonal matrix is what we're working with. Now, the, the most important feature of orthogonal matrices is demonstrated by the next theorem, which says that a square matrix Q is orthogonal when the inverse of matrix Q is equal to the transpose of matrix Q. So let's verify that this theorem holds true. So we're gonna let matrix Q be a square N by N matrix. So then by definition, the transpose of matrix Q is also a square N by N matrix. Now by our last theorem, we know that the columns of an N by N matrix Q form an orthonormal set when the product of the transpose of matrix Q with matrix Q is equal to the identity matrix. Now using a previously established theorem, since matrix Q and the transpose of matrix Q are both square matrices, such that the product of the transpose of matrix Q with matrix Q is equal to the identity matrix, then we automatically know that matrix Q is invertible and we also automatically know that the transpose of matrix Q is equal to the inverse of matrix Q. Oops, we did it. Woohoo! So this is exactly what we needed and verifies that a square matrix Q is orthogonal when the inverse of Q is equal to the transpose of Q. So with that, let's go ahead and continue exploring orthogonal matrices with the following examples.